Now that you're pretty skilled in factoring, expanding, all those good things, we can learn how to go from standard form to factored form of a parabola. Remember that standard form looked like this. y is ax squared plus bx plus c. Factored form was two brackets, x minus p and x minus q. In order to go from standard form to factored form, you need to factor. In order to go from factored form to standard form, you need to expand. You're pretty capable of doing all of these things, so we're just going to do two quick examples and show you how to pull the key features of a parabola from those. First and foremost, let's put x minus 9, x plus 3 into standard form. We're going to identify all key features of the parabola. I need to expand here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to rewrite my problem. x minus 9, x plus 3. I expand, x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x, negative 9 times x is negative 9x, negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. I combine my like terms in the middle, that gives me x squared minus 6x minus 27. Okay, I can start pulling some information. Well, you remember that the last number on our standard form gave us the y-intercept, so our y-intercept is negative 27. We also recall that factored form gives you your x-intercepts, and the x-intercepts have the opposite sign as to what is in the brackets. So my x-intercepts here, instead of negative 9, it's going to be positive 9, and instead of positive 3, it's going to be negative 3. Our axis of symmetry is located at the halfway point between negative 9 or between 9 and negative 3. So I'm going to find that by saying 9 plus negative 3 and then I divide by 2. 9 plus negative 3 is 6 divided by 2 which is 3. So my axis symmetry is located at 3. In order to find my min or my max I need to plug 3 into my equation. 3 minus 9, 3 plus 3. 3 minus 9 is negative 6, 3 plus 3 is 6. Negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. So my min or my max is located at negative 36. And so my vertex is then located at 3, negative 36. And we've gotten all of this information without needing to graph. Our second example here is where we are going from standard form into factored form. Let's start by factoring. I need two numbers that multiply to give me 20 and that add to give me 1. I also have a negative sign here. The negative sign meaning that one number is going to be positive one number is going to be negative, and because this is a positive, the larger of the two numbers is going to be positive. Let's start. In order to get 20, I can do 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. It looks like 4 and 5 would give me the one that I am looking for, and the larger number, 5, is going to be positive. 4 is going to be negative. This will give me Negative 4 plus 5 is 1, so those are going to be my two numbers. My factored form is then y is equal to x minus 4, x plus 5. Let's start pulling information from our equations. The last number here in our standard form gives us the y-intercept, so I'm going to pull that. Negative 20 is our y-intercept. Our x-intercepts are the opposite numbers of the ones in the brackets, so instead of negative 4, it's positive 4, and instead of 5, it's negative 5. My axis of symmetry is located halfway between those, so I'm going to add them together and divide by 2. 4 minus 5 divided by 2 is negative 1 over 2, so my axis of symmetry is negative 1 over 2. 
In order to find the min or max, I plug this into my equation. So that'll be negative 1 over 2 minus 4, negative 1 over 2 plus 5. Negative 1 over 2 minus 4 is negative 1 over 2 minus 8 over 2. And instead of 5, I'm going to use 10 over 2. Negative 1 over 2 minus 8 is negative 9 over 2. Negative 1 plus 10 is positive 9 over 2. And so I multiply top times top is negative 81. Bottom times bottom is 4. So my min or my max is located at negative 81 over 4. My vertex is therefore located at negative 1 over 2, comma, negative 81 over 4. And that's that.